What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk about silver. More specifically, I want to talk about the time that I doubled my money in silver. It sounds weird to say. I'll explain what that means in a moment. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos. Get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club for giveaways, live streams, deal alerts. You can watch Sunday's video right now if you want to. And I just posted a brand new adventure vlog talking about how I can now get free Starbucks for life. And of course, last but not least, go and get your five free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. Everything will be linked in the description. So today, as I am posting the video, it is Saturday, March 5th, 2022. If anybody wants to place a bet, Kobe versus Masvidal, who you think is going to win tonight? But as I'm filming the video, it's actually Tuesday the 1st, which means I have no idea what the spot price of silver or gold is going to be by the time I post the video. So head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. So today, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to talk about something that I don't ordinarily talk about, and I wanted it to word it in a way that I wouldn't ordinarily word it. Doubling my money in silver. Now, truth be told, I didn't actually double my money in silver. I doubled my currency in silver. Big difference between the two. But according to the spot price... At one point, when silver reached its recent high last year, $28, $29, $30 an ounce, at that point right there, I had technically doubled my currency. Now, I'm going to explain how I got started and what my average cost was at the time, and I'm going to talk about why I chose not to sell and why, if the spot price were to go back up to the 20 eight, dollars $30 range or beyond, I would still choose not to sell. Plot twist, it has nothing to do with trying to get my money to triple or quadruple or anything like that. So when I first got started stacking silver, spot price was about $17 an ounce. Back then, in late 2017, early 2018, premiums barely existed. It was just, you know, $1 to $2 over spot. And during my entire first year of stacking, the spot price had gone from $17 down to $16, $15, $14, and for a very brief period, it actually went below the $14 an ounce mark. And again, premiums barely existed at the time, so when I saw a spot price at $13, $14, keep in mind, this was my first year stacking, I didn't really know what I was doing, I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't have a full understanding just yet. I had an idea, but I didn't fully grasp it. I don't think anybody can fully grasp it during their first year. A lot of trial and error is involved. Seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, familiarizing yourself with the market, and just learning about something that to you is brand new. It's something that has existed for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, but for me at the time, it was like a whole new world. So when spot price had been dropping during my first year, a lot of people, I would say the average person, would get a little bit nervous over that. For me, I took it as a good thing because I was like, all right, this is perfect. I'm just getting started. And every week that goes by, or every couple weeks, however frequently I was picking up silver, every single time I go and get more, it gets a little bit cheaper. The sale just keeps on getting better and better. And I basically chased silver all the way down to the $13, $14 range. Again, premiums were only a dollar or two over spot, which means my average cost at the time was probably about, I'll say 16 bucks. And funny enough, when spot price had fallen all the way down to the $13, $14 range, it stayed in the $13, $14 range for quite a bit of time. 
And like I said, it was my first year, so I didn't really know what was going on or, or I didn't really 100% know what I was doing. But for some strange reason, I couldn't get, at, get it out of my head that this is probably the bottom and if I don't capitalize on these low, low prices today, I don't know if I'll ever see these prices again. And here we are, about four years later, and so far, we have not seen those prices. I mean, we did for a day when the crash of 2020 happened, but I don't even think that's worth counting. So I remember saying to myself, being a complete rookie at the time, being just a complete noob, had no idea what I was doing. But I was still making videos back then. And I remember saying in plenty of videos back in the summer or the fall of 2018 when Silver really bottomed out, and by the way, it stayed at that bottom for a while, I remember making videos back then saying that I don't know if I could necessarily see Silver going any lower. And it's funny because there are people who leave comments on my videos today, this week, this month, who say that they're waiting for Silver to go back down below $20 an ounce. Well, funny enough, back then, back in 2018, those same people were saying, I'm, I'm not buying silver at $14 an ounce. Are you kidding me? I'm waiting for it to go down to 10 So that's, you know, lesson number one right there. Understand that a very specific price tag attached to each individual troy ounce of silver is not guaranteed, is not promised, is not a sure thing. You don't want to bet the house on it. You don't want to bet the farm on it. You don't want to say, Oh, I'm going to wait until the spot price of silver goes down to where I want it to go. Of course, we would all like for it to go down to a very specific number so that we can get a whole bunch more. But in my opinion, I don't think you should sit around waiting for that to happen. Why would you do that if it's not guaranteed? None of us have a crystal ball. None of us are psychics. None of us can see the future. And there were a lot of people who were ignoring silver at $13, $14 an ounce. The new norm for silver is in the mid-20s. Those of you who were stacking back then, or even those of you who weren't even stacking back then, if, you, if you're just imagining those prices, you might be thinking to yourself, what is wrong with these people? Saying no thank you to $14 an ounce because you were, you're greedy and you wanted it for 10 If you want to wait for the spot price to hit a certain number, there's nothing really wrong with that, but in my opinion, I think you should be stacking on the way there, on the way down, or on the way up, whatever it is you're looking for, whatever you want the spot price to be, you don't have control over what the spot price is, I don't have control over what the spot price is, spot price of silver is going to do what spot price of silver is going to do, so you don't want to bet the currency on it, or anything like that, but anyway, not to get sidetracked, I remember saying back then that this probably is the bottom. I can't see it going any lower than this. So now is the time for me to, as they say, load the boat or back up the truck. And I kid you not, I got more silver in the summer and fall and probably winter of 2018 than I did at any other point in the last four years of stacking, more than four years of stacking. I would say that I got probably, over the course of four years, I would say that I probably got close to a third of the silver that I own in grand total during that short period of time. Now, I don't know that to be 100% accurate, so don't take my word for that. I'm just, I'm just guessing. I'm, I'm just... I'm assuming that's probably roughly around how much I got. I went crazy in 2018. I was hoarding as much as I possibly could. I That's when I started cutting back on all of my other expenses. I was like, what can I not pay for anymore so that I have more currency left over to get more silver? I saw it as an opportunity, and I chose to capitalize on it. So, from the very beginning to present day... That period of time when spot price was $13, $14, maybe $15 an ounce, when premiums were only a dollar or two over spot, that's when I got probably a majority of the silver. So that's what has kept my average cost so ridiculously low, 
even when I was picking up silver at $25, $26, $27 an ounce with three, four, five dollar premiums. That barely even put a dent in it because of how much silver I got at maybe $16 premium included. So my average cost was probably about $15, $16 for a while. And once silver started climbing its way back up, and especially after the crash of 2020 happened and it made its recovery back to where it was before it fell, it didn't just make its way back up. It made its way back up and then it just kept going. It kept climbing and climbing and climbing. I remember saying back then that I didn't think silver was going to surpass the $20 an ounce mark for years. I was like, there's no way that's going to happen. And then it did. And then not only did it hit $20, it went to $21, $23, $25, $27, $29. In a very short window of time, by the way. It went by so quickly, I didn't even have a chance to raise my average cost. That's how quickly it was going up. It was moving faster than I could acquire it. Which is why my average cost still stayed very, very low at that time, even though the spot price of silver was already up almost to $30 an ounce. And with my average cost per troy ounce being about $15, $16, and then we were looking at the spot price just being a hair away from $30, at that point I realized, according to fiat, according to currency, I've 2x'd everything. Some people might look at that and say, you doubled your money, hence the title of the video. That's when I doubled my money, or should I say doubled my currency in silver. Now silver has dropped down since that point. It went from 27, 28, 29 for a very, very, very split second. It hit $30 and then quickly dropped right back down to 29. But it's dropped down quite a bit since then. It's made its way back into the mid-20s, and for a little bit of time, it was actually back down to the low 20s, $22 an ounce, give or take. Obviously, premiums still exist, but the spot price had dropped down quite a bit. Stack price, which is something entirely different. Stack price is the spot price plus whatever the average premium is at the time, which is why a good part of last year, I was saying the average premium is probably about five dollars i would say it's a little bit lower at this point i see a lot of places selling for three dollars over spot but i'll just round up and call it four dollars over spot just to be a little bit more fair so with the spot price for me today again i'm filming this video multiple days before it's being released today spot price just cracked the 25 dollar an ounce mark again add on a four dollar premium that's 29 dollars an ounce out the door price that's what stack price is. But what's funny is that when I first got started stacking silver, all the way to the point where the crash of 2020 happened and silver fell and then it climbed right back up and then it just kept climbing and climbing and climbing. When silver reached its recent high of $29, $30 an ounce, and my average cost at the time was about $15, maybe $16 an ounce. I had only been stacking for maybe two years, about two years at that point. A little over two years now that I think about it. The tail end of 2017 to the beginning or, or maybe getting closer to the middle of 2020. So let's just say two, two and a half years. I doubled my currency in two and a half years. Now... There's a very specific reason I chose not to sell. I could have sold. I could have absolutely sold. Parted ways with all of my silver for twice as much cash as I put in in the first place. And if I sold it online, on eBay and social media and whatnot, you better believe I would have been able to get a rock-solid premium. Premiums back then were 5 maybe $6 over spot. I could have very easily sold for 3 $4 over spot each individual troy ounce of silver. So at that point, I could have more than doubled my currency. I could have very well done that, but I chose not to. I made a very conscious decision not to sell. And the main reason for that was because I got started stacking in the first place with the intent 
to not sell. I didn't buy so that I could later sell. I put my currency into silver in the first place to get away from the currency. Why would I want to get rid of the silver just to get more currency than I had initially? Silver is my escape from the currency. And as I've said in previous videos, if spot price goes up, a lot of the time that means the dollar bill has gone down. See, you could argue that silver doesn't go up or down or sideways or, or in any direction. Silver doesn't even move, one could argue. It's not that spot price is going down or up. It's that the value of the dollar bill is fluctuating. So when silver starts to rapidly climb, one could make the argument that it's not rapidly climbing, but maybe the dollar bill is rapidly falling. So if I put $100 into silver, and now all of a sudden that $100 worth of silver is worth $200, I could very easily go and sell it and, and run around, you know, like, like, like a parade, being like, wow, I doubled my currency. Did I? Maybe I did, but I didn't double the value. Because guess what? If the spot price of silver doubled in value, odds are the dollar bill value got chopped in half. Or close to it. So sure, I put $100 in and got $200 out. But guess what? That $200 can probably buy me what $100 could have bought me two years ago. Look at inflation. That's what happens. And that's the main reason I chose to get started stacking silver with the intent to never sell. Now, I can't say that I will never, ever, ever sell if I'm ever in a really bad situation where I'm forced to sell, that's beyond my control. But to be honest with you, I can't really see myself ever in my life deciding to sell, regardless of what spot price does. Now, depending on what the gold to silver ratio does, maybe I'll trade some silver for gold if an opportunity presents itself to me, but I'm not going back to cash. I got rid of my cash so that I could get the money. Why would I get rid of the money just to get a larger amount of now weaker cash? To me, it doesn't make sense. I'd rather have the silver. But another reason I chose not to sell wasn't because I was thinking to myself, wow, I just doubled my currency in silver. Let me hold off and see if I can triple it. That's not what I said to myself. That's not what I said. Had nothing to do with that. It was because I knew that those who hold assets, those who invest, those who are involved in the different markets, those who don't worry about the currency, they don't want the currency, they understand that cash on its own is trash. Cash just sitting there getting nothing done is as good as garbage. Cash flow is a completely different story. That's not what we're talking about. I think cash flow is king. I think cash on its own is as good as trash. But I knew that the people that were holding assets, regardless of what the assets were, it could be even baseball cards for all anybody cares. I would argue that baseball cards are probably... Standing a better chance than the dollar bill, if I'm going to be honest with you. But obviously, this isn't about baseball cards. It's about the different asset classes. It could be about the precious metals. It could be about owning a business. It could be about owning real estate. It could be about owning stocks. It could be about owning all of those things. Those are different asset classes. And I personally believe that the people who hold the assets, those are the ones who have more power, if that makes sense. It's not about how much you're making. It's about how much you own. It's not about your income. It's about your net worth. And that's right around the time that all of this started to really click in my head. I knew what my intentions were, but I needed some experience. I needed to get some skin in the game to actually start to really understand it. So you can learn about something, you can go to school and they can tell you, oh, this and this, you know, makes this happen. That's all fine and dandy if you're looking at, you know, a freaking textbook. But what if you go out there and you actually do it? That's how you get the experience. You could read about something, 
but I'm a hands-on type of person. I'm a hands-on learner. I'm not one who can really benefit from textbooks or, or, or classroom settings. I need that trial and error. I need to fail a couple of times. That's just how I am. That's just the way my brain works. So when it came to the silver and the gold, I knew what I wanted to do. I had a general understanding of the concept of stacking and wealth preservation and, and, and potentially hedging against inflation and understanding the gold to silver ratio. And I, I understood it. But I needed a little bit of time to stack the silver and gold. I needed to pick up my fair share of coins, rounds, and bars. I needed to see the larger denomination, the 10-ounce silver bars, the small denomination, 14th-ounce coins, silver dimes, the 2-ounce, the 5-ounce, the 1-ounce pieces of silver, the quarter-ounce pieces of gold, the 10th-ounce pieces of gold, the 1-gram pieces of gold. I needed the experience. And then when I started to get the experience and, I, and a couple of months had gone by or maybe a couple of years had gone by, I started to understand it more and more and more. And all that really did for me was give me even more confidence in the decision that I made to get rid of my currency by injecting it into assets, mainly silver and gold, regardless of what the spot price is, because that's the price. That says nothing about the value. The spot price plus the premium, the stack price, the out-the-door price, whatever you want to call it, that's just how much currency it takes to get. That doesn't say a single word about the value that you'll get from it. So that's why I chose not to sell. That's why I still choose not to sell. I could wake up tomorrow morning and spot price could be at a brand new all-time high. Went to $60, $70 overnight. I still wouldn't sell. I would consider swapping one metal for the other if silver going up that crazy high caused the ratio gap to close in by a lot. I would consider doing that, but I'm not going back to cash. I don't care about doubling my currency, tripling my currency, quadrupling my currency. I don't even care about 10xing my currency. It's not about the currency. I don't want the currency. I put the currency into silver to get away from the currency. So those are just some of my thoughts. I know that was a little bit jumbled of a story. I didn't really hit record with very much of a game plan. I just knew that there was a topic that I wanted to talk about. There was nothing structured about this video. Usually I try to keep my videos a little bit more structured. I want this one to just be thinking out loud and having just really a, just starting a conversation. So I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Do you see it the same way that I see it? You're stacking the silver, you're stacking the gold, regardless of what the spot price is. So what if it went up a little bit and the premiums are a little bit higher? You're still getting far more value than anything else. The value, If the value still exceeds the cost, there's really not much to complain about. And if the spot price were to go down a little bit, maybe it goes down below your average cost. So what? Now you have the ability to lower your average cost so that when the spot price goes back up, you have a stronger chance of being able to kick back and say, hey, I just doubled my currency, <laughs> if that's how you want to view it. But I want you guys to head on down in the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. If you guys like today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos. Go and get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. We got t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, coffee mugs in a bunch of different designs. We have the limited edition, luck has nothing to do with it, t-shirt and hoodie. Only available until St. Patrick's Day. Get one while you can. A portion of the proceeds are going to St. Baldrick's Foundation. DYDSS store will be linked in the description. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club, which is where I do giveaways every single month live streams multiple times a week, deal alerts on silver and gold every single day. You can watch all of my videos early and commercial free. You can watch Sunday's video right now if you want to. And of course, 
I just posted a brand new adventure vlog talking about how I can now get free Starbucks for life. And there are a ton of other perks as well. I guarantee you the value exceeds the cost. VIP club link in the description. And of course, last but certainly not least, go and get your five free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. They're going to give you five free random stocks just for doing so. And then if you refer one friend by March 15th, they will give you 10 free stocks for the referral. And if you refer three friends before the end of the month, they will give you a spin on the spin wheel where you're guaranteed at least one free share of Apple with the chance of winning two, three, five, seven, maybe even 10 free shares of Apple. All you got to do is click that little invite button, send it to a couple people that you know, bing, bang, boom. It's quite literally that simple. Don't pass up on an opportunity. We will link in the description. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again. What are your thoughts on everything shared in today's video? When it comes to my own personal experience and my own personal story of how I was able to load up on a whole bunch of silver and my average cost was about 15, 16 bucks. And then the spot price moved kind of sideways for a little while. It started moving up a little bit and then boom, it dropped March of 2020. And then boom, it shot up over the next couple of months, all the way up to just a hair under $30 an ounce, which meant that I essentially doubled my currency in silver. What are your thoughts on that right there? If you woke up one day and you were able to say that you doubled your currency in silver, would you sell at that point? Would you hold off and see if you can triple your currency in silver? Or are you on the same page as me? Or at the very least, in the same book as me, where you wouldn't sell unless you absolutely needed to, and maybe you would swap a little bit of silver for a little bit of gold if that opportunity presented itself to you. But for the most part, no plan on selling, no intentions of selling. Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.